one of the first things we do in Australia is, um, if we're ever at a conference, is we acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and pay our respects to their elders, past and present. So before, uh, also, I want to um, acknowledge Lou Williams, that couldn't make it here, a very courageous, uh, inspirational woman. And it's a bit sad Lou's not here, so I send my prayers to her. I want to acknowledge um, Theodora Hillis, that's my travelling buddy um, from Australia, who's a leading attorney in asbestos litigation. And um, Theodora's other job was to keep me in check while I'm in the US, and she's failed dismally at that, let me <laughs> tell you. Uh, uh, and I want to acknowledge uh, my fellow uh, labour organisations that are here from all around the place. And, it's great to see so many of you here, and we should get a photo later on. And of course, I want to acknowledge Linda because um, she internationally stalked me to get me here. She was on, she's a very patient woman, and she, I probably frustrated the hell out of her. But I'm here, you know, yeah, and I, and I'm enjoying it. And I want to say thank you to everybody for our, for the hospitality and our warm welcome. It's been magnificent. So I want to give you a bit of the Australian perspective. Um, and then I want to talk about trying to connect uh, the unions with uh, asbestos advocacy groups like we do in Australia. So I want to give you, just give you a bit of a perspective about what, what we're up to and what's happened with us. So we had the, the, the world's highest per capita use of asbestos between 45 and uh, 83. Uh, we have the highest uh, per capita rate of asbestos related disease not forecast to peak until 2020. It's a bit, getting a bit higher, actually. Um, disease comes in waves, as we know, and we are currently in uh, our third wave now. Renovation, you know, Fixer Upper, um, the show, the, so we get your Fixer Upper shows in, in Australia, but we also get our own. We've got, there's a whole heap of uh, renovation shows. And of course, in Australia, that's a problem, because I'll tell you why because there's more than 2,000 people a year get affected by asbestos-related disease. Um, also, uh, in 2003, I don't know if you're aware that we formally banned asbestos. But, and here's the big but, here it is. Two in three dwellings in Australia still contain asbestos. And that's a problem. Right? So we, uh, I think Theodora and I were talking the other day about well, essentially Australian kids grow up with asbestos and I remember what we used to do, we used to use the um, broken fibro, which is like sheeting, on, on a number of our homes. We'd use it as chalk on the road and you know, all that sort of stuff. So God knows you know, um, how many of us are you know, going to be affected in the end. So Mr Fluffy, I don't know if you're aware of Mr Fluffy, so Mr Fluffy was a name uh, given to a company uh, that uh, put loose fill asbestos into uh, ceilings. Uh, there's been identified, and this is mainly in an area of the Australian Capital Territory, Canberra, um, 1,064 homes have been identified and they're earmarked now for demolition. Um, simply because we, we had a bit of a campaign with the ACT government. Uh, the federal government then came on board as well um, so uh, they're, they're in the throes of doing that. I think they've done about um, 80 currently, um, so they've got a fair way to go. Um, but uh, horrific. Uh, oh, the other thing I want to say about Mr Fluffy is the president of our um, ACT branch, so the Australian Capital Territory branch, Jason Jennings, grew up in a Mr Fluffy home. And he, he tells me that um, when he'd go to his drawer to get his uh, pyjamas out, um, he could if you rattled the, the, the wardrobe a little bit, the flakes would come down. You'd see it all coming down on top of his head. And uh, anyway, you can only hope that, uh, hope to God he's okay. Um, hospitals, schools, almost every building uh, in Australia contains asbestos. Um, so obviously it's a big issue for us as unions. So we decided to, to look at um, community-based campaigns, grassroots organising and having real conversations and stories about this issue. So uh, the trade union movement initially in Australia um, did not get involved. Um, there was a big problem with Witten Noom uh, where 
the union that actually covered that wasn't my union, even though we've got mining in our name. Um, there's a bit of a jurisdictional difference between what mines can be covered. There was another union called the Australian Workers' Union, and they, were, they remained a bit silent on uh, the early stages. But, of course, once the word got out, and the unions really campaigned hard then, um, certainly our union did. Uh, so the other, the, other, the other thing I'm trying to say is we're not the only ones. So it's not the unions that just go out and campaign. Uh, what we do is we essentially have these relational organisations that we connect with, and essentially they are the asbestos victims advocacy groups, and we include them in everything we do. Uh, so as I said here, uh, as the wave of illness progressed, community structures were forny, forming, union members were often affected and therefore their experience in relational organising organizing was transferred and the connection was recognised and maintained as another way to campaign through a different lens. So I'll show you why. So we believe that it works for individuals, it works for organisations. Uh, and our networks and adds depth and strength to our arguments. And it's a no-brainer, really, connecting with these, these groups because it's, um, it actually brings the union's credibility. Uh, it, you know, if you've got victims groups there, it brings them credibility, so. And what we also do, we don't just try and involve them, we also help them out financially. So one of the things that we do is, and in kind support, so whether, whether we can do, use people on the ground, um, we can use some of our resources. Uh, we'll have situations where we'll help uh, fundraise. So we'll have big, big events like Barry does. ADFA in Sydney has a big uh, horse racing event, um, and you know there's thousands of people that turn up to this. And the same, they do the same in Brisbane, in Queensland. Um, but we'll also, like in in our Queensland branch. Uh, what we do on the, on the union ticket, we actually say to our uh, health and safety reps and whoever else want, wants to contribute, there's a voluntary levy. So when they, they can, all they have to do is tick a box and if they, when they tick that box, a voluntary levy goes into the asbestos disease support groups. Um, but also the other thing we have, um, obviously we involve them in our strategy and our planning, there's political support and there's guidance. So this, is, this photo is significant because for a couple of reasons. So the bloke with the, uh, the fast haircut like me over on my right, for the furthest over the right, is Andrew Ramsey, who is the, um, the safety coordinator for the Queensland Northern Territory branch of the CFMEU. But he has another role. He is the president of the Asbestos Support uh, Society in Queensland. Um, and the woman over, right over to my side here, that's uh, Amanda Richards, who's the CEO. But the significant part is the, uh, the, the people in the middle. And um, essentially they're the Sagers, and they're involved because their son, Adam, uh, died of mesothelioma at the age of 25. He was diagnosed in 2006 and was gone by 2007. Um, so, but it's, the reason why I put that there, it, we have a big connection with our um, supports uh, advocacy groups in, in Australia. So obviously when, when you bring such a powerful coalition together, when you bring everyone together in the tent and you go out and you campaign hard, you get things done. And one of those things that we're very proud of is the Asbestos Safety Eradication Agency, the only one like it in the world. And, um, and at the moment, the Conservative government in Australia is trying to defund that, uh, but uh, they've, got a, they've got a fight on their hands that they're going to try and do that. So, because uh, we've got good people and we're ready for a big campaign. The other thing was uh, we made James Hardy pay. Um, that was a huge <laughs> dispute in Australia. It was a defining moment, actually. Um, and that, that photo is actually Greg Combay, the one with the badge on, is the former ACTU, the Australian Council of Trade Union Secretary, and he's shaking the hand of Bernie Benton, who was the face, poor old Bernie, God love him, uh, was the face of our, of our uh, big campaign that we had, very successful. And essentially it's not over, the fight goes on. Uh, I'd just like to end with, we have a saying in our union, 
and that is dare to struggle, dare to win. And I'll give that to you. See ya. Thank you.